Welcome to our next video in the series about reaching internationals in our communities. And last time we talked about kind of the perspective or mindset that you want to have in uh, reaching people from different cultures who are live, work, or go to school with you. And this time we want to talk about some of the practical on the ground strategies we can use uh, as ourselves or for our ministries or churches uh, to reach international folks. And uh, really this comes down to, in one phrase, it's about mobilizing people and resources, bud. So tell us a little bit about some of the challenges and kind of the things that you've done over the years to mobilize people and resources. Well, one of the challenges that we have is that uh, many people come to North America and they think that we're Christian nations, mm, mm -hmm. that uh, all of us are Christians and that uh, we, you know, everyone goes to church, et cetera. Right. And, and that's uh, very confusing for them when they come and realize, wait a minute, things are different here. Mm -hmm. And it's not all, they're not all Christians and they don't all, uh, they're not all, you know, real moral people, et cetera. So we have challenges to, in, in, uh, in trying to overcome those mm -hmm. barriers or those mindsets that they have when they come here. Um, some of the things that we can do is we can, we can invite them to events that we, that we do mm -hmm. uh, or that we, we would create for them. Again, we don't want to do the bait and switch. Uh, we don't want to come across in, in such a way and say, uh, come and come to this great time we're going to have, we're going to have a party, right. and then someone shares the gospel or right. shares uh, a testimony, which is okay if it comes in the context, in a, in a, in the, in a proper context where you're uh, not really all of a sudden having something formal happen. But um, we, don't, we, we want to be people of integrity and honesty mm -hmm. with them. And again, build the relationship, build trust. It takes time to do all these things. So what's, what's an example <clears throat> of uh, one kind of a big event that has worked for you in the past? Well, there's many different ways that you can do that. The holidays are incredible mm. opportunities for us to hold and host events uh, for, for internationals because they're interested in our holidays. And so we have opportunities in that regard. Um, one of the things that we did uh, when, when I was in California, there was a, uh, a place called Apple Hill mm -hmm. in the Sacramento area. And uh, we had a festival. They, they have a big festival with, with all sorts of uh, events happening in the apple orchards uh, up, up in the hill country. And so we would invite the students. We would even get buses. I mean, I, this is going you know, more than just the average event, but yet sure. we, we made the effort to do this and they were very interested in it because they heard about it. And, uh, and so we had uh, a family that opened their home to, uh, to us, a big, beautiful home. So we went and had uh, all these events, uh, took place, uh, took part in these events in the hills, in the apple orchards. And then afterwards, this family invited us for a big meal in their home. They hosted it. It was a wonderful time. The students loved it. They talked about it all year long. Wow. And uh, it, not just students, but other immigrants mm -hmm. that came. And it was a, it was a bonding time and a, and a time that we, we built relationships and trust. And uh, it was, it was a, it was just excellent. So uh, there's other things that we, we've done with Thanksgiving dinners, mm -hmm. uh, New Year's parties, celebrating the Asian New Year, mm -hmm. all these things, uh, hikes. There's many different things that you can do to, uh, to connect and, uh, and invite. Right, and when you have integrity like that and you're, you're honestly trying to help people, um, when, you, when it comes time to really share who you are and your faith, like they can see that there's a difference between mm -hmm. you and, and your friends and your church than just this, this idea of the American culture or the Canadian culture that they maybe came in and assuming that. And, it, and even if you are sharing the gospel in that context, it's not a bait and switch right. because they have seen that you are the real deal. That's right. And so along those lines of truly investing long term, you also had a pretty interesting event that you're still involved in right now in the university campuses. So tell us about that. Well, one of the things that you can do uh, that, we are, that we've done in the past is you can host uh, an English, ESL, mm -hmm. English Second Language. Uh, we, we, do a, we call it Conversation Cafe, mm -hmm. where, where we have, some people call it Talk Time, whatever you, you want to call it. But it's an event where you, you sit down with people and have a conversation with them that they can practice their English. 
that's, again, we said uh, that one of the biggest barriers that people face in coming to North America is learning English. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, they know English better than we do, hmm. many of them, especially hmm. international students, because they know the grammar and right. the syntax and all these things. Uh, they can read, they can write, they can hear it. But to speak it is another is the biggest challenge for any language acquisition. Mm -hmm. So we, we have these conversation uh, uh, classes, and I've written uh, over 60 that they're free. If you, if you just email me, uh, you, you're free to, to get them. I'll send them to you. And it's like two years of conversational English classes that mm -hmm. you can use to, uh, to open the door for uh, relationships, building relationships. We talk about the holidays. We talk about culture. We talk about issues that, you be, that you're going through, family uh, struggles, all these different things in the, in the conversation uh, uh, discussion guides. And they're, they're very helpful. They're very helpful. You'll, uh, you, you would find them uh, effective in, in building those relationships with people. Cool. And so you've seen a lot of fruit over the years with that. You've even been able to read or talk through the Bible with people uh, in your conversation cafes. But there's one thing that's really important uh, to making that work is you're not a one-man show. No, you're not. And it's, it's important to recruit effective volunteers. Mm -hmm. Um, people that are really have a heart for uh, internationals, mm -hmm. and uh, you can you can you can recruit them in various ways. But the most effective way is one on one. Mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago, I mean, about uh, six months ago, I, I was talking to a lady one day in our church, and I, I mentioned to her, I said, I know that you've done some international travel, etc., and you're you know, would you be interested in working with internationals? And she said, you know, I, I think I would. And I, I told her what we did with our conversation cafe. And, and she, it, I, I saw her eyes light up and I went, wow, this, mm -hmm. you know. And sure enough, she came to our training and, and she's been one of our best volunteers mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that we've had. Um, she, it's, it's, it just is, uh, it, it works well to do one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. recruiting. But if you, if you don't know who to recruit, and uh, connect with, uh, your, you know, check, check out with your, your, your pastors in, in your church. They know people who have a keen interest in missions. Mm -hmm. They know people who, have, who maybe have served as missionaries, and missionaries, ex-missionaries, are just invaluable mm -hmm. because they have a heart for the world and for internationals. Uh, there are many others that, uh, you, that they, they can refer to you, you know, people who have taken multiple mission trips and so on. There's, there's always that potential to, mm -hmm. to, to find people that way. Uh, families mm -hmm. oftentimes are interested in, in working with internationals because they want their children to connect with other cultures right. and learn uh, about that. And so that's, that, uh, families are, are it's wonderful to have families involved in that. And a lot of internationals, students, immigrants that don't have family here, and they, have, they see these children, mm -hmm. they love it because they miss children mm -hmm. and they miss connecting with them because so often they're just, especially students, are stuck with their peers right. and they don't get the connections that they have. That, that's why this last group um, is, is really important also, and that is seniors. Mm. Uh, I call uh, I call the uh, uh, the golden ticket in in international <laughs> ministry because uh, seniors have they have time mm -hmm. they have money mm -hmm. they uh, they're patient they're loving uh, and and oftentimes they don't have anything to do right and and we kind of even uh, in our culture set seniors aside and and here this ministry of reaching out to internationals is kind of the one of the the, the more uh, wide open doors for for ministry for se for seniors to get involved in. Um, many of the cultures that come to North America, well, I think all of them mm -hmm. actually, <laughs> that come to North America that, that have immigrated or international students or refugees, they have a, a extremely high value they place on their on the seniors mm -hmm. or the elders in their society. Right. They love to sit at their feet, listen to their wisdom, listen to their stories, etc. Mm -hmm. And we have this resource that 
that they would actually flock to. I've seen it m over and over again where we have our conversational English events. When we have our seniors, they're the, they'll, they'll sit at a table, they're the first table that's filled. Hmm. Uh, when uh, we have any events, the seniors, the, the students and the, and the immigrants will, will flock to those seniors and go, hey, I just want to hang out with you because I miss right. uh, the elder connection mm -hmm. from, my, uh, from my society, from my culture. And so we have that wide open door with, our, um, with reaching out to seniors and saying, hey, get involved. Mm -hmm. we, will, uh, we, we will see that you'll find this the most fulfilling ministry you have ever been involved in. And I hear that story, I hear that, uh, that quote from countless seniors that have been involved in our ministry. Well, they have said, al almost every one of them has said the same thing. I have never been more fulfilled in ministry uh, than when I have now been involved with internationals. That's fantastic. It's and, and it all comes down to having uh, kind of a long-term investment, long-term integrity, long-term desire. You can do these holiday events and stuff, and but really getting people involved is about giving, casting a vision for for God's desire to reach these people. And now that we've given you some practical strategies, we're going to turn to that in our final video of this series of what's some big takeaways we can use to effectively reach the internationals around us.